Hello my dear viewers and welcome to another video from this here old dwarf. Today we will be talking about the wonderful game Torchlight 2. Oh another isometric action RPG game. Done a few of them now. Yes this is like the third one I've done now but hey it's a genre I enjoy so there is likely to be more videos in the future. There is definitely some good ones I've yet to talk about. If you don't mind dear viewer I will walk blah 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 blah. I will talk just briefly about my channel. If you like what I do here at the old dwarven hold of our ancestors, then I would be ever so grateful if you were to subscribe, like, comment on, and share this video with your friends. Torchlight 2, as stated, is an isometric action role-playing game, developed and published by Runic Games, released on the 20th of September 2012. So we are just past the 10 year anniversary. Torchlight 2 builds on Torchlight 1 with some new features, including an overworld, new characters, and of course, multiplayer. The original Torchlight was developed by some of the same designers as Diablo 1 and 2. This first game of the series was similar in some ways to that first Diablo game. In rather than running about different areas out in the world, the player delved deeper and deeper into the caverns and dungeons by the mining town of Torchlight. It was a good time, tightly designed for a single player experience. Torchlight 2 built on what had been achieved in Torchlight 1, adding co-op, an overworld, enhanced UI and other features. The story also continues from the first game, with one of the characters from the original game, The Alchemist, now up roaming through the world causing trouble. Again, this was quite similar to the follow-up to the original Diablo, of course, dear viewers, being Diablo 2. In that game, the Dark Wanderer character who bested Diablo in the first was pursued through the multiple different areas and biomes of that world. Here our intrepid heroes must follow the alchemist in an attempt to stop his path of destruction. The art direction and graphics of Torchlight 2 is one that is quite cartoonish and colourful. This is quite in stark contrast to similar ARPGs such as the aforementioned Diablo 1 and 2, Path of Exile and Grim Dawn, which were all quite firmly in the grim dark camp of world design. Perhaps this was in an attempt to appeal to a wider range of gamers or perhaps they were a bit tired of the grim dark and fancied something a bit brighter. Regardless of the reasoning, Torchlight 2, on the whole, feels a lot more light-hearted than the other games in the genre. Both the player characters, the surroundings and the baddies you will come across are coloured with a brighter palette, being less gritty and more simple in their designs. Having their own stylized art design rather than cutting-edge graphics may have made it easier to render on low-end systems and consoles, allowing the game to be experienced by more players. Torchlight 2 has a wonderful start menu. You can look at the credits, you can look at some cinematics, you can load should things need to be loaded, you can resume, of course, by resuming. If you don't fancy any of that, you can go for a new game, or we swoosh up here, see the settings, and finally, you can. So, in the light of the torches the second, before you begin you must create a character. And no dear viewers, sadly a mighty dwarf cannot be selected in this game. Do not worry, for this and other games we have played which have besmirched the good dwarven race excluding them from playability have been dutifully added to the great book of grudges. You can choose between male and female with a few extra options and of course what class you wish to play. There are four available classes, the Engineer, which is a heavy melee based character that can make use of bots, battle wrenches and oversized cannons. The Outlander, which is a ranged focus class that makes use of damage from afar with some magical and mystical arts thrown in. The Berserker, a melee focused nutter that makes use of fist weapons and can summon animal spirits in battle. And the Ember Mage, which is a ranged caster class that focuses on elemental spells to destroy their foes from afar. For my playthrough, I picked an Ember Mage. You begin the game near Torchlight, with the Alchemist having broken out and gone on a rampage. You are tasked with taking up his trail with the intent to put an end to all the chaos going on. While in pursuit, we embark on numerous quests, helping the local Densians with all sorts of tasks, usually in telling us killing some monsters and or finding some doodad or other. Once you have finished the story quest in the current act, the player is moved on to the next, but with the ability, should they wish to, to travel back to any previous acts. This allows the player to head back and finish any side quests they may have missed, or should they have the urge to run about the place. The gameplay, as you may have guessed, is your the gameplay, as you may have guessed, is of your traditional isometric ARPG. 
That is, you use the mouse to run around the map using the mouse buttons and a set of hotkeys to use powerful skills and spells to diminish the foes and destroy them utterly. Each class has three different skill trees they can invest points in once they've reached a level. The skills are generally level gated which means you can't put all your points into one powerful spell right at the start of the game, rather you slowly unlock new powers and ranks as you progress. The skill trees are quite diverse with the Ember Mage exhibiting one tree for fire, one for frost and one for lightning. Each of them have unique spells themed around the given element. I focused mostly on the lightning tree as I like firing lightning. Pew pew had they foe. Besides the actual abilities themselves, there is your general attribute stats that you can add points to whenever you level up. Five, in fact. These are your fairly traditional strength, dex, vitality and focus. Each of them increase different values from crit chance to health values and physical and magical damage. Besides class specific abilities, there are also general spells that can be learnt by any of the classes. They are more generic in fashion with buffs like movement speed increase or additional mana regeneration. This allows the player to have a little more choice in how to build their character. From the start of the game, you can pick a pet that will accompany you as you go through your quest to stop the alchemist. They are not idle and will effectively help you in combat and can be equipped with specific items such as collars and tags. Tied in with the fishing, which you can do at special ponds out in the world, you can turn your pet into something more dangerous, boosting their damage output. Your pet has its own inventory, which effectively doubles your carrying space. It can also be sent back to town to sell all the items in the inventory, as well as purchasing some much needed supplies, like mana and health potions. This helps to keep the gameplay moving, with the player not having to travel back to town so much to sell and buy items. The gearing, as you can imagine, is a big part of the game. You can fill all the standard gear slots like gloves, chests, shoulders, etc, along with the three slots for your pet. There are rarities of course, going from white common up to orange legendary, which are powerful additions to your armory. Some items will have sockets, which the player can fill with an assortment of ember pieces, such as plus resistance, mana regen, increased damage and more. Some items have special unlockable powers which will require you to kill a certain number of enemies. The game provides several different NPCs, along with the traditional shop NPCs in each camp that features one for enchanting gear, adding a new random attribute, one for combining different items to make new ones, along with NPCs to remove ember shards or destroy them. Socketing gear, enchanting items, talent trees, general spells and the gear itself allows the player a lot of headroom in which to tailor their character to their specific builds. So, uh, how does it actually play? It feels good to play, I can tell you this. It took me a little while to find the skills that I really enjoyed the most, but once I had unlocked certain skills in combination with gear, I was very satisfied with the character I was building. Once you get into the groove, it is great fun to lay waste to all those evil doers. I would say, perhaps due to my class selection, there are very few skills that gave mana or health regeneration. My character didn't appear to have any passive health regeneration at all until I socketed in some regenerating gems. This led to me leaning into health and mana potions throughout my playthrough. I would need to send off the pet to gain more potions when I was running low quite often. Early on, especially, I was low on gold and a lot of the time having to down lots of potions in my travels, which was making me quite broke. After a while though, it was all fine. Torchlight 2 is a solid addition to the genre, providing a good challenge to the player while setting up the environment to allow said player to really tailor their character to whichever build they might be going for. The bosses are interesting, the general fodder too, and the biomes are colourful with little secrets and special dungeons littered throughout. I think I should probably mention the modding scene. Torchlight 2 provides for a wealth of modding opportunities, allowing the player to add all sorts to their game, like new areas, classes, monsters, pets, items, and the list goes on. On my playthrough I simply used the respec NPC mod, but if I wanted to I could easily mod the game to my heart's content. So yes indeed this is a good game. One that can happily be played on your own or with some friends. If you're looking for a good slice of ARP action and have yet to try it, then I would heartily recommend this game to you. There's plenty to do and ways to build your character that can keep you busy for quite some time. And there we have it, another video. I hope you've enjoyed it dear viewers, and I hope that if you are unaware of this before this video, then perhaps you may know a little bit more about the wonderful game that is Torchlight 2. I close with a simple request to subscribe and what have you, and I wish you well. My dear viewers, thank you and see you next time.